Thanks very much. Uh, nice to be here uh, on things. So this, I think it's around 20 minutes. I'll try and leave some Q&A uh, for the end uh, on here. And what we'll be talking about is just retail media, uh, sort of, and from an investor standpoint. Just in terms of my background, I was 20 years as a analyst in the city. I uh, covered the media and tech uh, during that time. I was twice analyst of the year, and then two and a half years ago, decided to set up my own consultancy uh, and advisory firm, which is Liberty Sky Advisors, are, are often there, so we're, uh, with a mixture of services. Um, in terms of when we talk about sort of retail media space, the way I'm going to split this up is into five parts, which is really talk about a little bit about the advertising market in general and where things are at the moment, sort of short part. Second of all, what's happening in retail media. Third of all, think about sort of how investors look at retail media and what's like to be driving sort of, of their thinking. Fourth of all, how essentially what's going to be um, what's going to be the implications for the media and tech space as a whole, and then just some final thoughts just in terms of retail media and where it where it stands. So, advertising environment at the moment, sort of, of I'm sure you've heard this sort of of um, before, generally looks quite benign. Probably one thing that would say, and again, this is relevance to retail media is. Yeah, there is this bit of a disconnect there that if you look at the more transparent media, things like broadcasters, sort of publishing, etc., yeah, even the likes of online search and social media, it doesn't look that great at the moment. Um, a lot of growth is coming in non-transparent areas, things such as retail media, what's happening with CCV, etc., etc. So this is likely to be a focus of the advertising market moving forwards. I would say that when you look at what is the most important drive for advertising, um, it's going to be corporate profitability. If you look at the research sort of that comes through, we tend to think about the consumer and um, bit of the most impact. But actually, if you think about it, it's, it's corporates who spend the money on advertising. So if they're doing well, then they'll spend on advertising. And that's probably the core reason why advertising is hold, held up well. If you go to states, for example, you're looking at US corporate margins are probably at or near a 70-year high on things. And there's no signs that that's changed. In the UK, again, things are quite sort of, of quite positive on margins. The, the, there's change in terms of, we won't go into details, pensions, which would also help when it comes to the advertising side of things as well. So overall, from an advertising perspective, things should be relatively benign. So in the overall scheme of things, actually quite positive about the ad market, both in terms of this year and also next. Bear in mind, next year we've got US, UK uh, general elections. There'll be a lot of pro-growth policies coming from governments. So that, that again, should feed through into the ad market. Go on now in terms of retail media. I mean, retail media itself, everyone knows about the sort of growth story there. If you look at the forecasts that are coming through, depending on which sort of, of agency you look at, you're probably looking at mid to high teen growth sort of our, our, on sort of an annual basis for the next four to five years. That really doesn't sort of take into account the growth that's coming in ex-China, because those are global numbers. If you actually strip out China, where retail media is already well established, you're probably looking at 20% plus in terms of where the forecasts are from a compounded annual growth rate for retail media. So obviously people are thinking this is going to be a hot topic, probably five-year view, depends which media buyer you look at, but you're looking at forecasts probably around low teens, 15% of total global ad spend. Of course, it's already been there before. So the, uh, in terms of Amazon, obviously it's shown strong growth within there. Again, strong growth, Q1, 23% growth sort of, of, on a reported basis, probably slightly higher underlying basis. Bear in mind for something like an Amazon, sort of, of advertising now is at least half of its profits. It's an extremely high margin business for it. Yeah, and actually it's going to become more important as you get slowing growth coming through at AWS. The e-commerce business, it probably loses around, my estimate, around $10 billion a year in terms of e-commerce at least. So realistically, what it's relying on is advertising to sort of pull it through. But why, sort of, you might be thinking in time, well, that's been known for a couple of years. Why is it that retail media has suddenly exploded onto the stage? Well, bear in mind from an investor standpoint, Amazon is covered by tech analysts, covered by tech analysts and tech investors. Yet it's not covered by people in the retail space, retail media uh, and analysts. Now, you may think, well, so what? But the point being is that that would have been off for retail investors. The whole idea of retail media advertising would have been off their radar screen. That changed last November when Walmart came out and said, we're doing 30% growth in advertising revenues, we're getting $2 billion in annualized revenues coming through, and more importantly, this is high margin. Now, retail analysts and investors will look at Walmart. It's an extremely important stock for them. And suddenly what you had was that the retail investment community woke up and said, hold on a minute, 
for these companies, this could be extremely sort of, this could be a new leg to the, the story because if you look at what the ANA said about sort of, of margins for retail media, around 50 to 70% margins altogether. Now, bear in mind, retailers make probably high single digit margins. So if you think about that from a, a margins perspective, you don't have to get much in the way of revenues to actually get sort of, of significant growth coming through in terms of profits. And if you take for Walmart, in terms of its growth moving forwards, it talked about 30% sort of growth for this last quarter in ad revenues. At 60% margin, you can get sort of within a, a 12, 18 month view, advertising been around 1% of its total revenue base. But if you apply midpoint to that ANA margin of 60% margin, you're looking around 15% of its profits. Now that's for Walmart. That, you know, that is an absolute, probably the biggest retailer in the whole world. So you think about it for, from that standpoint, that makes a meaningful impact in terms of the financial numbers. And for analysts and investors, they're suddenly like, wow, this is potentially, this could lead to a new angle to the story that essentially leads to these stocks being re-rated and essentially the share price is going up. So this is why you've seen suddenly a lot more interest come through. What has happened is that many retail investors and analysts have gone to their retail companies and said, what are you doing in the retail media space? Yeah, this is obviously going to be a high area of growth. There's a potential there for you to make money off this. Tell us what your strategy is going to be. And so consequently, what you've had now is every single retail company is under pressure to actually come up with its own retail media strategy so it can go to investors. The thing that I always say, and pardon the language, is that sh uh, sort of shit travels downwards yeah, on things. And one of the things that need to realize in terms of when it comes to CEOs, CFOs of these companies is, the one set, set that they are sort of are particularly concerned about are what investors think, because investors can actually get them the sack. So investors put pressure on them. These managements are going to put pressure on their teams to actually do something within this space. Now, you bear in mind, many retailers don't know that much about the advertising space, certainly at the CEO level. And indeed, the retail analysts investors don't really know that much about sort of, of advertising and so on. So, for them at the moment, this is this category that is sort of, it's not really that well known, but they just see it as potentially a big area of profits are on there. But what's going to be sort of, of important to note about that is that essentially what sort of, of the financial community does care about is when companies actually meet their targets and miss their targets. And so what you've got now is that companies coming out and giving targets for retail advertising, both externally and internally, that will need to be met. And that pressure will come downwards. So, for example, one sort of, of feedback heard sort of about one sort of, of large uh, retailer sort of, of based in the UK is that their CEO has demanded that essentially retail media ad revenues grow 100% for the next three years. Now, that's obviously sort of a very substantial target. Obviously, it depends where you start off in terms of the base. But that's a hell of a lot of growth to go through. That's going to be putting a lot of pressure on CMOs, et cetera, to come up with the, come up with the numbers of that. So, the focus on retail media is only going to continue to get stronger and stronger over time because you will have pressure essentially on company boards and management teams to deliver the numbers. Now, quite frankly, from their standpoint, as I said before, they don't really sort of understand that much in terms of, of the advertising side and sort of breaking it down and neither do their investors. So realistically, all they're concerned about is a number they can actually give to the financial markets to say, we've delivered this much in terms of, of of retail media revenues on here. And that sort of leads on to the point, I'd say, about what are the implications when you look at the media and tech space sort of moving forwards. Because you know, one of the things that I think you're going to see in this space is it's going to become very much the Wild West. And the, the reason why I say that is that essentially what you have here is companies who need to deliver are on numbers and need to deliver in a, a very swift amount of time. So sort of, of a lot of opaqueness in terms of what those revenues actually constitute on things. People not really knowing what they're doing and a lot of hand-holding that will need to be done. So what sort of sectors should probably benefit in that sort of environment? Well, one thing you probably sort of, uh, one area I think will benefit is uh, ad tech. Uh, and I think sort of of there, the reason is, it is essentially because of the complexity within the retail media space, and because of this demand to actually get revenues sort of by hell or high water, then essentially a lot of these companies are going to be needing sort of a lot of hand-holding. So if the ad tech sector, uh, sector actually plays it right, then potentially this could be the new sort of, of next angle for it. Now, generally, I'm not that positive 
sort of, of from a sector standpoint in terms of ad tech, but I do see where there is a potential on the retail media side for them to make a lot of money out of, of this space. And again, it won't necessarily be, if you want to be a skeptic, it won't necessarily be because of the quality that's added. It's just because of the process and just because of the incentives that people need this to work. And they need to actually go back to the people above them and actually show that they've delivered on these numbers. So which are the uh, sort of, of areas potentially will, will benefit? Well, I think you know, advertising as a whole will probably benefit. Yeah, it's clear that retail media is taking in money into the space from areas such as trade budgets are on there. That's likely again to continue. Look at what the ANA said. They said that retailers are putting pressure on many of the big FMCG companies to actually spend in terms of retail media. That is not going to go away. Again, for the, the reasons that I explained before, these companies need to deliver on targets. So they will put pressure on the companies that supply them to say, look, we need to show that we are making progress here in terms of retail media. You need to help us on that. So expect that very much to continue I I in that space. But as I said, that will mean that probably the overall size of the advertising pie will, will grow. Other areas that should benefit, well, if you, if you take the view that retail media is search, there could be an argument for saying, well, well surely search gets impacted at, uh, at some point. I think short to medium term, the answer to that is probably not. Uh, if you look at someone like a Google, for example, 85% of the revenues come from SMEs are on there, and they're not going to be sort of, of who's going to be doing retail media. If you look at large advertisers, things like travel, which again, probably retail media at the moment is not going to be sort of, of impacted from. But areas that could benefit, some of which may seem a bit surprising. So for example, sort of go back to the point I said before, companies are not going to be that uh, picky about how they define retail media revenues. And so consequently, what you're going to get, I think, is you're going to get quite a lot of blurring that comes through sort of on some of the lines. So I'll give you an example, out of home. Yeah, you think, well, out of home, surely retail media is not out of home revenues, the two should be separate. Well, I think what you will see there, for example, is that essentially, let's say you've got targeted offers sort of within range of two or three miles of a supermarket, increasingly that'll be categorized as retail media revenues. And actually, if you think about it, that benefits all sides. It benefits the retailer who's able to say we're delivering on retail media ad revenues. It obviously benefits out of home because they're, getting their, they're tapping into a new revenue stream. Yeah, advertising still is very much siloed when it looks at it. People tend to look at it in categories, even if the sort of trend is to try and break that down. But those siloization is still very much going to continue. So yeah, that's one potential area. TV, I think, is another area. Again, may seem sort of strange, but if you think about it, the idea has been that TV and search sort of is a very good combination. If you take the fact that actually retail media in a way has very much search-like properties, you can see there how TV could piggyback off the back of that. So again, for some of the traditional media sectors, if they can craft, as it were, an angle on retail media, there's a potential there to tap into those budgets. And you know, Again, I, I sort of reiterate this point again, just because it's important. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of incentives here for people to actually talk up the amount of retail media advertising revenue there is in the market at all levels. Yeah, investors, companies, also as well, sort of, of medium tech companies are, are on the ground as well. So the benefits from retail media could actually be a lot more substantial uh, than what people think. Um, a few thoughts, just finally, and then if anyone's got any questions, um, please ask. Um, where I actually think retail media sort of goes? Well, again, sort of go back to the point before that talked about in terms of, of retail has search-like properties. If you accept that argument, bear in mind that sort of when it comes to, to search, network effects really count. Scale really, really matters. There's a reason why Google is 85% of the search market. And essentially, its share has been pretty constant. That's ex-China, pretty constant over time. I mean, I always call search new yellow pages. Yeah, you remember those old big yellow books? I know a lot in the audience won't remember them. Big, you know, big yellow books and so forth. The market leaders would always have dominance in the market, even if you had very wealthy competitors come in and try and chuck money. And the reason why that model doesn't break is essentially because for both sides of the, uh, of the equation, Scale counts. Advertisers want the biggest source of consumers. Consumers want the biggest source of advertisers. Exactly the same sort of thing when you get to search. And it be exactly the same sort of thing when you get to retail media as well. If you have the scale of customers, there's going to be a disproportionate benefit coming through to the largest players within there. If you are the smaller players, I think what probably happens is they'll need to try it out first 
to actually show they've done something, but eventually over time you'll get consolidation that will come through within that space, and again, you'll get aggregation, and again, that could be an opportunity, uh, particularly again for, for ad tech. Market-wise, um, one word of caution I would have on retail media, a lot of the views, and this is, has got some parallels with streaming, um, for example, is that a lot of the views on retail media that we're getting at the moment, I, I'd say I have a very US-centric view of the market. You know, they're saying, yeah, it works in the US, yeah, therefore, sort of, of, if it works in the US, it must work across the rest of the world. Now, as we've seen in streaming, that's not necessarily the case. There are different dynamics coming through. I'd say probably in the case of retail media, it's slightly different. Yeah, it is not a case of differences in the TV market that's going to be driving this. It's essentially going to be the scale factor. Yeah, again, yeah, there's going to be very few retailers, even in countries like, for example, the UK, who've got the scale to actually make this a meaningful proposition, given the amount of time that they're going to have to spend it. So what you may see also as well coming through is you may see sort of, of more and more deals, as you've seen, for example, with Carrefour and, uh, and publishers, really been done on, on more of a continent-wide basis. For example, the work they've done in Latin America, just essentially see so that you get that scale coming through. So, yeah, in summary, I think the, mar the retail media advertising market is going to grow, yeah, it is going to grow very substantially. There's going to be very powerful sort of institutional factors why that's going to be the case, and that's probably going to be the single biggest driver. Uh, of what goes this, it is going to make sort of looking at advertising growth a lot more sort of opaque um, in terms of things. And there are opportunities here for quite a few sort of, of players in the media and tech space to make money off the back of it. I don't know if we've got time for questions or. Is there any actual question you've got right down the front here? Sorry, Jeff. You're talking about trade budgets. Um, have you done any work to, uh, or has anybody done any work to kind of figure out what proportion of the growth of retail media is, uh, media is coming out of trade budgets in this new environment? Uh, short answer is no. Yeah, on that, it's still very early. Uh, and the problem you've also got here as well, and again, this is going to be, this is going to be another factor to consider as well. From an accounting standpoint, when it comes to retail media, sort of how it, it's accounted for, it's, there's not one set standard. So some of it will be counted as revenues. Some of it will be taken off cost of goods sold. Get in that. So you've got those sort of definitional factors. Now, again, your implications of that moving forwards are probably that, um, again, what it means is going to be sort of, of again, if one wants to be cynical, easy for companies to say that they've met their target when it comes to retail media, even if there is not a separate line in there that talks about retail media advertising. Um, but in direct answer, no. No, no one has uh, uh, sort of looked at that at the moment. My, my feel would be is that probably, you know, you, you know, you're probably looking at a quarter to a third of the total will come out of, of trade budgets. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I think we've got a question down the front here. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, this might be a slightly tenuous question, but where, where does the consumer fit in to this? equation because with high interest rates now less affordability um, that affect in the UK and the US or coming to the US soon so that invariably feeds the corporates that are going to need to then generate the profits out of mm -hmm. consumer purchasing yeah so I mean and you're right I didn't really mention the consumer in that and that, that's because quite frankly I think for this process you know it, it sounds awful to say but they're actually the least important part when it comes to what will drive what would drive this? I think when you look at the consumer, there's a couple of things to factor, uh, factor in. One, obviously, is they've taken so that the price increases more than generally what's, what's been expected on there. Interestingly, if you look at the company conference calls, when they talk about why that's the case, you know, why the historic pricing models are broken down in terms of elasticity, uh, the, the single most common answer that comes back is the strength of the brand on there, why they've been able to push through price increases. I think you've probably got other facts as well. I think that, you know, again, the research, the academic research in this will come out sort of, of decades later, but I suspect what's also happening as well is that post-pandemic, you've probably got people saying, hey, um, again, pardon language, fuck it, I'm just going to spend on, on things that I like. And there's an element of that which is probably coming through. I'd say also as well, um, you know, bear in mind the consumer's very polarised when it comes... You, you know, take that with interest rates. You know, we think about the UK, obviously there's been a lot of, of news about sort of, of people facing sort of rising uh, mortgage bills, et cetera, uh, and a lot of people under pressure. Eight and a half million households don't have a mortgage yet on there. And if you look at sort of, of 
their propensity to buy, particularly at the higher end of the range. It's been grow, grow and grow and share of the market. So people often talk about the people who sort of are under stress. There's a lot of people out there who are actually doing quite well. Also as well, sort of, of more, if you want to call professional upper classes, did better in terms of, of wage increases as well during the pandemic. So there's a lot of people out there who still have substantial amounts of money. And again, coming back to our 12 to 18 month view, we're coming into the US elections next year, UK ones. Things are very much driven by the US when it comes to interest rates. Almost certainly what you'll, you'll see at the start of 2024 is US interest rates coming down. And that will have, well, that will have several effects. It has an effect in terms of worldwide interest rates coming down. It also as well has an effect on inflation. Um, one of the things that doesn't, um, doesn't get sort of factored in, you know, one of the reasons why inflation was so strong last year, commodity prices are priced in dollars. So you got an increase in the underlying cost, and then you had an increase in the dollar. So that sort of, there was a double whammy. That will start to reverse out. I mean, you've got a lot of drivers why inflation should come down moving into 2024, low fertilizer prices. I mean, things like that, which sort of feed through. So I think from a consumer standpoint, yeah, this year sort of be slightly tougher, but I think for next year, probably the consumer's going to be looking in a lot better position. Excellent. I think we've got one more very quick question. Thank you. Um, thanks, Ian. Um, we talked about Walmart and Target and all the big brands that you expect in the space. Based on your analysis, um, what would be an emerging player, perhaps, that we don't necessarily think about, but it could actually have a significant importance in the retail media space? <laughs> yeah, that, that, oh God, you put me on the spot with that one. Um, I would say, I mean, I said before about scale, sort of, of scale counts. I'd sort of, if slightly roll that back, I think what could be very interesting players within this space could be um, niche retailers that have a very defined, very lo loyal sort of uh, following. So, it, yeah, I, uh, and as I said, you put me on the spot here. So it's like, but if I think, for example, of somebody such a, as, and this will sound very geeky, someone like a games workshop, you know, as you think about that, that sort of it, it's a very targeted niche of people who are very sort of passionate about what they do, probably prepared to spend a large amount of money. It's a very targeted base. There's probably for quite a lot of, of AM advertisers, there's probably quite a good audience to reach, even though they haven't got the scale. I think when we talk about scale, what we'd probably sort of say is that's when you look across the board if you want to look at general sort of, of general products. So I'd say if you're looking at a single biggest category, it's maybe those niche players where they don't deliver the numbers, but what they do deliver is a high quality in terms of the audience and people who are prepared to spend. And that's, that's maybe where there's a very interesting angle. Oh, no worries. Excellent. Ian, thank you very much for your insight there. Appreciate that.